Hey guys, welcome back to another video in Cap Long Experience of Justice. Today's video is the long awaited SVT for January and it's not like any other video. Today we have a special guest, Cartoon Apocalypse. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for joining or uh, thanks for inviting me over. <laughs> Thank you so I'm much. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so, this video, if anyone's new, SVT is share best theories. So, we just share the theories that you guys leave me in the comment section of my video. So, Anyways, thank you once again, Cartoon Apocalypse, for being here. And uh, do you want to tell them what we're doing in your channel? Uh, on my channel, we're going to be talking about if we think Queen Bee, or more specifically, Chloe, is going to be coming back as Queen Bee. So that should be very fun and interesting as well. Exactly. So guys, go and check it out because it's really epic. Also, don't forget to subscribe down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and let's begin. Okay, so first theory is from Miraculous Mariposa, so I'm going to read it right now. Okay, I know I'm really late, but I hope not too late. My theory is that Natalie and Gabriel may be the future Marinette and Adrian or from a different universe. So I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. It all started when I saw an edit with Adrian and Marinette and Gabriel and Natalie. It showed a scene of Natalie closing the door, then leaning on it when they transitioned to the scene of Marinette doing the exact same thing. Theory one, different universe. It could be that Marinette and Adrian grew up together in a different universe, but without Miraculouses. Marinette still has feelings for Adrian, but Adrian chooses Emily over Marinette. But since Marinette loves Adrian, she stays with him as his assistant throughout his life. What do you think about this? That's 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 <laughs> a very interesting. I don't know how plausible that would be for for an actual show because I'm very like technical and I need to make sure everything makes 100 percent sense before i am like yeah this is a good idea yeah true um, i think for an alternate reality like like they've said a bunch of things and and i've seen on twitter a lot that thomas has been retweeting like something like ballet marinette uh, like alternate universe stuff like it's not anything official but it's just someone mm -hmm. who's made uh marinette in an alternate universe as a ballet dancer and i thought that was really cool and it shows that they're totally willing to uh, open up the universe to different alternate universes as well. So I think uh, anything involving alternate universes is definitely a possibility, not necessarily something that we would see. But like, if you can imagine it, you know, well, who's to tell you it's not going to happen? Or that's the, good thing about, that's the good thing about Miraculous, that you can like think about a lot of different ideas. Like Miraculous give you the opportunity to think like that. But I really like this theory. I don't think it will actually happen, but it's a good um viewpoint yes <laughs> okay second theory is from ashley willow svt okay so my theory is that marinette is adopted yes i know it might be confusing but i have some proof about this her eyes are blue bell but her mom has gray eyes and her dad has hazel eyes she had to inherit those blue about blue bell eyes from her parents what do you think i mean i never thought of that before but <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that thrown out a lot, like, what if Marinette's adopted, or, you know, like, <laughs> I've also heard, like, oh, what if Adrian's, like, a senti monster, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, a lot of things. And the, the reason I'm not, the like, totally in tune with those is you have to ask yourself, why would they be adopted, right? Like, what does it add to the story? And to me, I don't entirely see a reason as to why they would add that into the story like why like what's the reason for marinette being adopted right yeah. uh but then also with the shanghai special supposedly we'll meet some of like marinette's relatives there mm -hmm. so if we do in fact meet relatives and they and they're like oh marinette it's been so long since we've seen mm -hmm. you as like a baby or whatever right that's gonna severely hinder that theory because it's gonna be like well here's these relatives that remember seeing her as a baby so like unless if she was adopted yeah. as a baby like you know. This is another part of the theory. It says, that brings me to my next theory, which is Marinette is related to the Order of the Guardians. The reason I think that is, is because on the finale of season three, Master Fu said Marinette is the most powerful miraculous holder he has ever seen. And in Kwame Buster, Master Fu says she is the most powerful miraculous holder in history. And Waze agreed. And the Kwamis know all the miraculous holders since the beginning. So what do you think? I don't know if that necessarily ties into why she would necessarily be related i mean it could because the um the kwamis are based some of them are based off of like chinese zodiacs and stuff like mm -hmm. that right so i mean it's not 
saying like even if she she doesn't have to be adopted to still be related to some of the past uh you know holders or like guardians or whatever so it just goes back for me at least i don't know and this is probably just me being super critical but mm -hmm. it always goes back to why would they do this for the show and i don't see a valid like like a really thought out reason as to why she would be adopted yeah exactly but it would be actually something interesting to see if it actually happens yeah yeah because then that would be like why why was she adopted like what's what who's her true family etc so they could definitely explore a lot with it i just don't see uh why they would need to at this point yeah okay next theory is from it's me cookie monster <laughs> Here's my theory. I think Chloe might be the one that already knows that Marinette is Ladybug in the episode Princess Fragrance, you know, when Marinette tripped and Tiki fell. So beginning with my theory, Clo Chloe already knows Marinette is Ladybug. Chloe already knows that a Kwame is what gives you powers, but she could have flashbacks when she took Tiki, thinking it was a toy. But then in the episode where Chloe's mom get akumatized, Marinette and Ladybug drop the miraculous. Chloe picked it up to a surprise it was a Kwame. So don't you think that Chloe knows? When she was Queen Bee, she figured out that Kwame's equal superpowers. So could she just go back and find out? Also, um, we already know that Bunnix will be finding out Ladybug's true identity, but we already knew that. Two people have seen a Marinette saw Marinette talking to Tiki, and Tiki tried to act like a cat. And Chloe said that Marinette dropped Tiki. And if one of them, if one of them two get akumatized, do you think they would tell Hawkma? They could have what they could have forgot what happened. And this is just a theory. So do you think this could actually happen? I actually never thought of this before. Chloe. Yeah, there's, I think there's actually quite a lot of these things where it's like, oh, if you think about it hard enough, <laughs> these characters should be able to figure it out pretty easily. Like there's been a bunch of moments with that with Adrian and stuff like that. But the Chloe one, I mean, yeah, that, that's a good point. Like, like as far as the doll looking sort of like a Kwame, but it just goes back to, it, it, it all depends on Chloe's memory as well as if Chloe could, piece that together because I, I'm pretty sure on her mind for most of the episode was trying to please the prince prince <laughs> I, don't, I can't I can't remember his name off the top of my head um but it was mostly just like I need to please him I need to get him a present she found this on the ground she's like okay this this works right um so I don't necessarily like it yes in theory you could be able to piece that together mm -hmm. is, is it gonna happen Probably not because, you know, quantum masking, not necessarily that this is a quantum masking thing, like this is more of just piecing it together, like sort of like what Adrian did in Cat Belong. But um, it's it's very much is, are, are they wanting to do this in the show? And from what we've seen, they have not wanted to, to have like a reveal of any kind in the show, yeah. except for of course, season three with when, when all the characters, <laughs> except for Ladybug and Cat Noir got revealed. So that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, it could happen. And also, I want to point out that in Kwame Buster, remember like Mrs. Mendeleev drew out the the Kwamis. And oh yeah, that's a good they, point. Oh, I forgot about that. That's a yeah. really good. Point. And Chloe didn't say anything. I don't like. I I don't think Chloe's dumb either. Like, I think she knows something, but at the same time, she doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, and it should. It could just be like she doesn't remember it. But then if she thought back to it and she thought back to that day, like, and she remembered. The, those two things and they saw them and she saw them together like she could probably piece piece one and two together yeah you would think but uh i think it there has to be the right circumstances for chloe to to be thinking about <laughs> both of those things because yeah she's exactly. very self-centered <laughs> that's gonna be interesting to see her in season four develop in some sort of way series from ezzy atef my theory, I still believe in the possibility that showed that Adrian might be a senti monster. Because remember the New York special, Majestia's daughter could see that there's magic in Techno Pirate when he was akumatized and we have no idea that Majestia's daughter can or can't see senti monsters. And the episodes called Ladybug showed in the news that a senti monster, la senti monster ladybug that was created by Mayura was fighting her. That means cameras or Majestia's daughter in this case can see senti monsters like she saw Adrian and can't see Kwame's like Plague. That's the proof. Pick my theory, please. <laughs> um, I don't know, honestly. Um, I've never been a fan of the senti monster idea. As far yeah, as Adrian it's really goes. confusing. Like, I'm like half and half with this theory of senti monster, but... Yeah, we have to be. Uh, <laughs> in theory, yes, yes, it, 
he could be a senti monster. Like, there's some evidence that is like, oh, he could be, and then, oh, he couldn't be, whatever. But I think, first of all, it goes back to why would he be a senti monster, <laughs> right? Like, there has to be some sort of reason. And two, you have to realize how many limitations that has, and we don't know. Because we saw in Ladybug that, that yes, you could make a sentient monster that is, like, identical to, like, a human being, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't know to what extent. Mm -hmm. So, like, like, I mean, I think that Ladybug had emotions and things like that. But, like, was she human on all levels? And and what the, what would that mean for the future? Because, obviously, like, you know, Marinette likes Adrian. And, and eventually, there's going to be some sort of relate. I would assume, some sort of relationship yeah. with them. But then... If he just ended up being a sentient monster, then it's like, well, is he actually human? You know, like, like, can they have kids? Can they, you know, like, like, at what point? I mean, the sentient monsters supposedly live forever until their uh, thing is broken. Yeah. But like, it just, I feel like it would take away from that relationship. And and one thing we've seen from Miraculous is a big part of it's the the relationships that the characters have. And I so I feel like that would sort of undermine. The relationship between Marinette and Adrian, and then ev everyone else who has a relationship with Adrian, because then it's just like it would be a different oh. level, honestly. On yeah, yeah, guys, if you're watching this video, tell me in the comments what you think about Adrian being a sentient monster, because we don't know. <laughs> Next theory is from Avi Kalp Negi. She says in season four or season five, there will be a reverse umbrella scene in which Adrian says his father that he isn't that young to have a bodyguard. So it will be a rainy day, but he'll forget his umbrella. In the meantime, Marinette comes and gives Adrian her an extra umbrella. While taking the umbrella, the umbrella falls off Adrian's hands and Marinette and Adrian try to pick up the umbrella, but hit her head with each other instead. Adrian thinks Marinette and Marinette goes away. Flag asks Adrian whether Marinette still hates him or not. Adrian gets shy. While Tiki asks Marinette that, did you see the way Adrian just stuttered in front of her? And Marinette replies that she just moved on. Now Adrian is just a friend to her. Wow, I would actually love to see this scene. That's such, that's such a, like a, a good scene that just comes full circle. Like I I love hearing things like that because it's just I don't know something about fan scenes it's, that are like 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 ah yes that, that's really good. <laughs> So I'd, I'd love to see that. It's not as much of a theory, but it's just sort of like, hey, this would be a cool scene to, to, to see. And I, but okay, here's the thing. I hate hearing those because it makes me want to oh, see them. Yeah, and it's exactly. like, we're not going to, because it's like the odds of seeing. To watch this scene. I know. There's so many good fan ideas out there. Who knows? But honestly, I think this could actually happen though, because Marina is going to be much more confident in season four. Like, she, like in the end, she got an ice cream of like self-love or something like that and i think she's gonna go through a lot in season four and this will lead her to be more confident and plus in the new special she wanted to like forget about adrian i don't think there's gonna be a point that she's gonna forget about him though like she's gonna love him I don't, yeah i don't know that's a very highly debated topic it's like is she going to transition to luca or is she gonna continue staying with adrian and people say like is he gonna transition to cat noir now like, I don't know. I haven't heard that before, but I, I suppose maybe. I think, okay, the problem is Marinette slash Ladybug is very, like, superhero lives are private. Like, like mm -hmm. they should not be, there's they should be superhero only. And that's basically her take on them. So I think, like, even if she did have, like, a crush on Cat Noir, I think... I don't think it would be realistic for her to try to chase that out because of that fact where she believes like, well, even though I do like him, it's like we're superheroes or at least he's a superhero. He doesn't know that I'm Ladybug, but it's like, it's got to stay private. Like that, that just, it, it's a superhero. You can't, you can't do that. So. Next theory is from Pink Turtle. And I think this is a theory, but it's also a scene as well. But let's, let's read it. So I have a theory about both Marinette and Adrian will find out that they're both Ladybug and Cat Noir. So in the episode six, season two, we see that Adrian and Marinette are practicing for the tournament about the video game Ultimate Mega Strike 3. Marinette gives Adrian a lucky charm she made. And as the episodes pass, we can see that Adrian carries it around with him. And in the episode of the Fauna, number six, season two, Adrian gives Marinette a lucky charm as well. So now what all of this comes to place is that Thomas Asterisk and his team mentioned that every episode of season four will be as intense as Catbomb. 
and we know the identities are going to be revealed. And since Marinette is going to go through a lot of pressure as being Marinette slash Ladybug and the new guardian, and they both may need to reveal their identities, but Thomas doesn't do things just because, and I believe that Marinette will be showing the lucky charm that Adrian did and say that this is a lucky charm a friend did to me to Cat Noir. And then he may realize that Marinette is Ladybug and both will reveal their identities. I don't know if this makes sense, but I hope you can break it down. Very sweet, but <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love things like that, where it's like, ooh, you know, the reveal happens without yeah. them knowing it. And it's like, oh, it's like very good symbolism and they have to figure it out. And it's not just like direct uh, telling or whatnot. I, as much as I love that, they are really pushing the no reveal thing on the show. Yeah. And I think that's that's the biggest problem with this is like, you can make all the theories you want about how the reveal is going to happen. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. Like, like back in the day, I was like, I think the reveal is going to happen in season three. Like, I, I think I think that was an idea that I had. <laughs> it just never <laughs> happened. Right? Um, so I've learned since then that the way they do things is not what you would think. It's like, yeah. we like egging on the reveal, but we're not, it's not going to happen for a while. Probably. It might, it may never happen. Um, they're, they're very cryptic about it. And it may never so happen. I think it was Thomas. What? It may never happen. <laughs> yeah, it may never happen, you know? We just don't know at this point. But Thomas had said something on Twitter, like, I, I think it was Thomas, like, oh, there's going to be, be a reveal in season four. Or yeah. season three, sorry. Uh, and then that ended up being Cat Belong. And, and he went back and confirmed, like, yeah, that was for Cat Belong. So they're very cryptic and they're very, like, joking about it. It's like, we know you want the reveal, but you're not going to get it. At least as <laughs> of right now. So. <laughs> I remember I was so excited. I was like, the reveal is going to be on season three. And then I was like, it was Cat Blanc all this time. And I was like, they may like have also been Oblivion. Oh, yeah. One of those two. They both, they both counted. A lot of people have been saying that, oh, Marinette, because she's guardian, she has to reveal her identity to Adrian. I don't think so, though. It's too, it's too direct. And I don't think Thomas Hashtag would do that. Like, yeah, you would think that that's how it would be like like thinking about it logically if i was the the miracle box holder the, or the guardian i would want to know who everyone was so that way i can manage it and make sure like like if they go rogue which i don't necessarily think cat noir would do but in theory if he did go rogue you know i have no idea i, I don't know who he is i don't know how to stop him like i don't know so you would think that right but like i said i don't think that's how they want to format the show. They want it to, to stay like similar to how it is. But obviously season four, game changing things in there. Mm -hmm. So I think the first episode of season four is going to set the precedent, especially if they continue on this format of like, well, you could watch any episode in any order, you know, it's a matter like, that means that the, the first episode and the last episode are the two setting stones for the entire season. So we will sort of know what the whole season will feel like at least um we know the things that will happen in the first episode are canon throughout the rest whereas you know the rest in between you could watch them in any order hopefully it's not like that again but um that's how it's been in the past so we'll just we'll have to see next theory is from someone but she says no name please i know this is from a while back but i think there may be a reason that aeon or majestia's daughter could see adrian if he was a senti monster it takes some explanation. I felt there had to be a reason the Peacock Miraculous was broken and maybe from misuse. If Emily made Adrian a senti monster, trying to keep him around alive took power. The Miraculous wasn't supposed to be used for. Therefore, it broke, but it also left an opportunity. Since it was broken, we assume the thing that is happening to Natalie where she was fainting kind of thing also happened to Emily. It looks like Natalie is almost losing all of her strength or maybe her life. If that's true, I think that in order to keep Adrian alive, the broken miraculous caused Emily's life force to drain into him every time she used it. So when Emily slipped into a coma, that's the point where she has given nearly all the life force she has to Adrian, making him more human than Senti Monster. So when Aeon sees Adrian, he's the least Senti Monster he can be and the most human he can be. And therefore Aeon can see him because he is not even close to being the pure magic Senti Monster he was. I'm still not sure if Adrian is a senti monster, but I felt this still left the door open. This could also explain why he has flaws, because his perfect magic self 
is now the smallest part of him. So he's as human as he can be. Also, this could be the reason why Emily kept using the miraculous, even though it was affecting her to protect her son. Fans actually think about this. <laughs> yeah, that was. I could feel that one. That one was. That <laughs> one was kind of silly. That made me sort of feel bad for like Emily and Gabriel. It's like it was all for Adrian. If this actually is true, maybe that's why Gabriel is so cold to Adrian because because of him. Yeah. It all comes together. That that's a really well thought out one. Yeah. I don't know. This could actually happen, but that that because there has to be some reason that she took that she used the peacock miraculous to that extent, right? Mm -hmm. But honestly, it's another thing that they never confirmed that she was in a coma. So we're just assuming that she's in a coma. So I don't really I think it was confirmed in a miraculous secrets episode, I think, or something. It was, or maybe it was Stormy Weather too. I don't know. It was one of the ones where like it was in clips or like something mm -hmm. like that, I think. Where they were like, she's not dead. She's just like in a coma or in a deep sleep. I think they used deep sleep as the actual term, but I don't, she's not, she's not dead. I can confirm that she's not, <laughs> dead, she's not dead, but I don't remember in what state she's in. Yeah, that's actually confusing. But this theory actually almost made me believe on Adrian being a sentient monster. Yeah, well, that was good. Uh, that's amazing. Anyway, thank you all for giving me your amazing theories. If you want your next theory to be in my next SVT video, leave me your theory with the hashtag SVT. Also, thank you again, Cartoon Apocalypse, for being here. And I hope we can do this another time. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Bye, guys.